What's up everybody and welcome Deacon here coming back at you once again with uh, another video. Today, or last night rather, I watched one of my favorite movies, Alien, 1979, Ridley Scott, written by Dan O'Bannon. Let's talk about it. In 1979, one of the most important science fiction films, as well as one of the scariest horror films, was unleashed on the public. Alien was directed by Ridley Scott, and it was based on the original script by Dan O'Bannon, with several revisions and rewrites. O'Bannon had originally started to work out the story and the basic synopsis after working on and starring in the independent student film Gone Out of Control, Dark Star which was directed by a young John Carpenter. The experience left O'Bannon unfulfilled and he began to write and work on a sci-fi script that focused more in a horror direction rather than comedy or fantasy. He partnered up with fellow writer Ronald Shusett, who was at the time working on what would eventually become the script for Total Recall. Shusett felt that O'Bannon's script would likely be less of a budget, so they decided to focus on that first. So, they put their energy together to work on Alien first. And at the time, they titled it Star Beast, <laughs> which is a hilariously stupid title. And I'm glad they changed it to something as simple as Alien. Now, up until this movie was released, the subgenre of sci-fi slash horror had only really existed in the B-movie markets. Even though O'Bannon was drawing influence from movies like 1951's The Thing from Another World or 1956's Forbidden Planet and even the 1965 film Planet of the Vampires, he still wanted to avoid those typical tropes already being established within both genres. With most of the plot in place, Shusett and O'Bannon presented their script to several studios, pitching it as the Jaws in space. They were on the verge of signing a deal with Roger Corman's studio when a friend offered to find them a better deal and passed the script to a production company called Brandywine that had ties to 20th Century Fox. However, producers David Giller and Walter Hill were not completely satisfied with the script and made several rewrites which caused tension and creative differences with the writers. When director Ridley Scott was brought on board, even more changes were made. The most significant change was the addition of the android character Ash, which O'Bannon at the time felt it was an unnecessary subplot. At first, 20th Century Fox didn't express confidence in financing a science fiction film. However, after the success of Star Wars in 1977, the studio's interest in the genre rose substantially. When Star Wars was the extraordinary hit that it was, suddenly science fiction became the hot genre. The studio wanted to follow through on Star Wars, and they wanted to follow through fast. But the only sci-fi script they had sitting on their desk at the time was Alien. And so, Alien was greenlit by 20th Century Fox, with an initial budget of 4.2 million. Ridley Scott drew inspiration from Kubrick's 2001 A Space Odyssey, as well as the recently released Star Wars, but he wanted to maintain and focus on the horror aspect of the script, describing it more as the Texas Chainsaw Massacre of science fiction, rather than Jaws in Space, as the original writers had pitched. Toby Hooper's gritty and shockingly realistic depiction of a family of killer cannibals in Texas had not only shocked moviegoers, but had a lasting impression on Ridley Scott after viewing the independent horror movie that would eventually become so influential to the genre itself. O'Bannon introduced Scott to the artwork of H.R. Giger, and they both decided that his painting, Necronomicon 4, was the type of representation they wanted the alien in the film to have. The first second that Ridley had seen Giger's work, he knew the biggest single design problem in the film had been solved. One of the reasons this movie was so scary was because it was so foreign. Everything from the interior of the ship and especially the alien environment designed by the great H.R. Giger. 
Scott flew to Zurich to meet Giger and recruited him to work on all aspects of the alien and its environment, including the surface of the planetoid, the derelict spacecraft, and all forms of the alien, from egg to adult. If it wasn't for what came out of his demented mind and an art style that he'd been working on for most of his career, the alien would not have been as unique. Now the first thing that Giger designed was the face hugger. Originally, he had thought of the design to be as simple as two connected hands with a mouth in the middle, and then it evolved from there. The inside of the face hugger was a collection of fish parts and animal gizzards. When they shot the egg sequence, they used hydraulics, and for the inside, they used different parts of cow stomach and tripe to make it look more real. So what makes this movie so scary? what makes this movie so shocking, especially to an unsuspecting audience of 1979, mostly which were hype on Star Wars and Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and didn't necessarily expect what was coming. One of the things that makes horror movies so scary, it is the fear of the unknown. And moviegoers, did not know what they were going into when they were going to see this movie the first time. I mean, this movie is 27 minutes before anything really happens and still almost an hour in before the famous chestburster scene. This is something that movies just don't do anymore. If there isn't some kind of action in the first 5 to 10 minutes, kids are like, boring, where's the remote? Which is sad, but essentially this is almost an hour build up to this one gag or reveal that is so over the top. It's rated in the top three most shocking movie scenes of all time. And it's this scene when the aha moment happens that begins to provoke thought in an unnerving kind of way. Like the rebirth scene in The Matrix, it's a moment when a sudden rush of what actually is kind of overcomes your subconscious and makes you immediately think of the possibilities. Only with Alien, those provoked thoughts are not just of an extraterrestrial creature, but that of a foreign entity that gestates inside of another being, and as we come to find, pure evil. This is something Ridley wanted to explore as an almost subconscious device for creating uneasy feelings about reproduction, birth, and motherhood. The movie is full of all types of hints and metaphors that suggest this. The entire movie itself opens with somewhat of a birthing scene as the crew is awakened from cryosleep. The ship's computer is named Mother, which is the overseer of all fundamental functions in the ship and its operating system. H.R. Giger's work already had a dark and sexualized biomechanical aesthetic that only added to all the disturbing and unwanted feelings stirred up by such visualizations. You see, you gotta keep in mind, when this movie came out in 1979, nobody had ever seen an alien before. We've all grown up seeing these creatures. But if you weren't hit, or you didn't know who H.R. Giger was, or you didn't know what you were about to see, I can assume that's everything from the face hugger to the chest bursting scene to the actual full grown alien. That's some freaky stuff to somebody who's never ever thought of that before. I mean, it's a part of pop culture now, so we're used to it. Like H.P. Lovecraft, which was also a huge influence on this film and its creators, as well as artist H.R. Giger, it is the fear of the unknown and what your own imagination does with it that makes horror so scary. The fact that Ridley Scott used darkly lit sets and the shots of the alien were so obscured enough and brief enough that it left room for viewers' imagination. Also the realistic nature of the characters and the ship. One thing that was different than most horror movies at that time was the age of the group. Mostly older, regular working type people, like truckers, but in the future. The very industrial and monotonous interiors of the ship brought a gritty and realistic, visually accessible atmosphere, but still foreign to the audience's everyday life, just enough to obscure the alien within it. From its writings, to its concepts, to its production and visualization, this movie is incredibly well thought out and purposefully disturbing.
It was so shocking at the time that it was even protested by religious groups. A group of Christian extremists even destroyed the prop of the space jockey that was on display in front of the Egyptian theater, claiming it was the work of the Antichrist. This movie is rated by the American Film Association as the seventh most important science fiction film of all time and the 33rd greatest overall film of all time. It was written and made to be a standalone story, but was so influential that it was copied and parodied more times than most movies. And it eventually inspired filmmaker James Cameron to make a sequel that focuses more on a battle story than a horror movie, although at some points it's just as scary. The sequel, Aliens, would be so huge and successful that it would spawn an entire franchise that is still going strong to this day. Albeit, there are some real stinkers in the franchise, but there are also the Prometheus prequels, which are directed by Ridley Scott, returning to the franchise. And I can argue, they are not only misunderstood stories, but it's incredibly good science fiction. We'll get into the sequels and the prequels and all the lore in another video. But as far as Alien goes, this was a groundbreaking movie and it laid a foundation to what would become one of the greatest science fiction franchises out there.